Yeah. Yeah, good fish. Straight in there, eh? Go in there. I've now reached my destination. I crossed that crazy bit. And uh, there's this great big cave behind me. Uh, it's obviously full of rocks on the ground and everything, so this is a promising spot. But all these rocks here are what used to be in the cave before it became a cave. And it's an ongoing process. Obviously it's happened over thousands if not millions of years where it's collapsed in on itself under pressure. But, you know, I'm thinking about setting up my tent there because I've made a bit of a clearing there. And the rock seems stable above it, but just a little bit nerve-wracking. Whereas the spot way out there is going to be way noisier, but way less danger of death by rock. Hmm. Before I settle on this campsite, I think I might just go for a little scout around and see if there's another cave. If memory serves, there's another cave down there. When you're in a situation like this, it's like nothing's going to be perfect. Uh, it's, you know, it's either a little bit damp or a little bit too sandy or there's spiders or whatever. So let's go work it out. Righto, so deliberated, 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 and then decided to come out to the ledge that I'm going to be fishing on the run out tide tomorrow morning. We've got a really really cool run out tide it's going to be pushing current right along the front of this ledge here right along there it's a bit dangerous to fish right at present just because every now and then a very big set comes through and washes over the top of this so i've got to be a bit careful there's a cave here which is awesome and i'm going to set up my tent right there ground sheet down uh, to protect the bottom of the tent held out by one two three four five rocks on the corners because obviously you can't hammer into rock now the tent. Still have to put the cover on it, which is in my hand. But I'm just gonna let it air out, it's been in the bag. So, got my little stove in here. So this stove just comes out of here like this. Lighter in there, and you just fold it out like this. Right. Put that down, hook that up to the gas, put that on there, and boil some water. Ooh, misty! Going with a uh, Nescafe Premium Frothy Cappuccino. Strong. Might keep me up, but fishing conditions are actually looking alright. So, I did forget my cup. It's a bit of a shame. But, that's right. Kill the gas. Drink it straight from the pot, eh? Why not? That looking like a coffee to you? It looks like a coffee to me. Let's find an amazing spot to drink it. So let me give these a go. Pro Lua fishtail. They kind of look like a, a bait fish that would be swimming around in this area. Really cool profile on it. I'm just pairing it with a 1.6 jig head. Tim all rigged up, hook sticking out of him. Right. <clears throat> it's been a rock fall here recently, as you can see by all the rocks on the ground and all this. We don't want that to happen while we're here. Yeah, I'll take you through my rigs in a second. Right, so what have I brought? This is my Shimano Sahara 2500. It's pretty much an estuary rod. I've got 15 pound J Braid Expedition on there which is really, really thin in diameter. I think it's 0.16 mil. Um, and that's paired with 10 pound mono as a leader, just because it's a bit more flexy and I find that I can impart more action. It's paired with a pro lure, little kind of fish profile looking thing um, on a six foot rod. Righto, first cast of this little placky. 
see how we go. Wind's behind me, which is good. I'm just gonna let that sink a little bit. Swim's good. Just gonna keep an eye on the sea because the tide is coming in. Last cast of this placky. So I switched to the Revros 4000, 20 pound braid, pilchard, or half pilchard, no weight. Let's go. Just leave it out there. Make sure the drag set okay. Yeah, she's all right. And then, uh, yeah, just play the waiting game. We're coming up to high tide too. But if there's any salmon around, moving along this ledge, have a bait in the water, why not? Keep an eye on the ocean. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can't get anything, but there is an absolutely beautiful sunset aura coming on, that's for sure. But um, yeah, I uh, just got a little hit. It wasn't from a big fish. I may have to change to a smaller hook if I want to catch dinner. I did bring some like hiking food, but uh, yeah, it would be nice to have fish in this environment. I'm just happy to be here though, to be fair. Yeah, I'm on to a good fish. Yeah. Gotta keep an eye on these waves just because I'm having a good time. I just let it sink a little bit lower. It's not many head shakes, I don't know what it is. I kind of thought like a snapper, but it might be just a dog shark or something. Keep an eye on the waves. Gave me a good run. It's just here somewhere. I don't, have this, I don't have visual yet. Yeah, it's a really nice snapper. Really nice. I gotta wait for one of these waves to lift it up. Ooh, right when you need a wave, eh? Hey. There is none. Dead lifting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but that is a great fish. He's guard hooked, man. Holy snap. I gotta get this in his mouth. Holy snaps, man. Look at this snapper. Whoa. Great fight, man. On the Rev Ross. What a great rod. That's such a good table fish. So much food there. I'm probably gonna let him go to be fair because he's a bit too much food for me, man. Depending on how hooked he is. Yeah, he's gut hooked. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. That is like pretty much my PB for snapper. And that's going to be dinner. I'll fill it him up. He's been gut hooked. So if I release him now, he's just probably going to die. Oh, 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 oh. Like and subscribe. Thank you, fish. So this is my PB snapper. And he doesn't look that big to a lot of snapper fishermen out there. But to me, that's just a great fish, man. Like so stoked, my goodness. All right, let's get it cleaned up and get some dinner on. Thank you, God. So I'll fill it this, um, and I'll cook it all so that I can keep it and use it tomorrow, because I didn't bring any ice. Oh yeah. And it was kind of hard to do, as in the fading light, I didn't have my torch on. All right, let's fry them up. All right, so I got this, which is a, like a hiking meal. It's honey soy chicken. Right, so all you do is freeze dried chicken, vegetables and honey soy flavor. So what you do is tear it open and then just add boiling water. Uh, let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, stir it up and away you go. So I'm going to have this alongside that, which is a whole bunch of snapper that I just caught. Right, so 250 ml of water, which is a cup. So it's probably there. How much is this? 1.5 liter. So a quarter of a liter. Here's a bit more. Let's go that. I didn't take the coffee out of it because yay, you two extra flavor. Put that on there and let's boil that water. Chazam!
turn this off a sec. Give it a stir. It's like peas and everything in there. And bits of dehydrated chicken and see how it goes, especially with the fish. Simple. Olive oil spray, straight into the pan, so it doesn't stick. There we go, it's on. Don't need it too hot because it's just fish. Tiny little chopping board, eh? Chuck it up into bite-sized pieces. This is a lot of fish, man. Straight in there, eh? Like, that's enough fish, really, for a fish wrap. And i still got all of this. I was a bit worried that I wouldn't have enough food, but... Catch and cook, man. It's actually happening. Yeah, Stormbird fishing. We're doing it. Right, this is looking... Obviously, I... You know, it's not the best fry pan in the world. I'm going to eat that in a minute. And then I'm going to eat this portion with that and see how we go. But for now, let's give it a try. Literally eating fish, straight out of the ocean. No sauce, no salt, and it's one of the nicest things I've ever eaten. Oh my goodness. I am so blessed. All right, I'm gonna chuck it all in. That's one. Look at that. It's the whole bloody pan. It's the whole pan, mate. Alright, so there's my peas and corn and chicken and stuff and it tears in half to make a nice little bowl. Man, it holds the heat really well. It smells delicious. Let's give it a go. So that's my pillow at this end, sleeping bag, and that's my tent. It's very, very close to bedtime. I'm pretty tired. Right, oh, uh, day done. Definitely time for sleep. I'm absolutely buggered. I uh, worked on the boat this morning and then came here, so it's a big hike. Uh, wind seems to be picking up the moment I got into the tent. Interesting. Anyway, um, what an amazing day, and um, good night. I'll see you in the morning. Let's catch some fish tomorrow. Good morning. So, slept okay. Took me ages to get to sleep, just with the noise and everything. I used um, earplugs so that I could block out some of the noise. Once my body kind of realized that my brain was in charge, and, uh, my flight or fight response settled down and I wasn't jumping at the sound of giant waves. I was able to sleep. So now what I'm going to do is start to set up, have a cup of coffee, have some breakfast because it's high tide right now and every now and then a very large set pumps over the top of that. So I've got to be really careful because it is really high tide but it's a run out tide right now means it's not going to get any worse than it is now so I may as well start getting ready and um, yeah let's try and catch some fish I need to take some fish home uh, for my fiance so yeah the freezer is a little low good morning let's get into it so I've got water on the boil here it's on my little stove and I'm gonna have this it's called a cooked breakfast a hearty combo of freeze-dried smoky beef tomato egg and hash brown potato mix. Let's give it a go, hey? Alrighty. Righto, water's boiled. Pour that in there, boiling water. There you go. Give this a stir. I mean, it smells like breakfast, like breakfast at the house, pretty much. And then just seal that up and leave it for 10 to 15 minutes. There you go, cook breakfast. Super simple. Hot cup of joe, let's go. Pour it in there. Breakfast will be ready in a minute too. Give it a stir. Nothing like a hot cup of joe. Right, let's try this breakfast in a bowl. 
I'll show you what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Edible. Pretty good. Yum. This is my camp. Hiking tent. That's all underneath this giant cave. Just keeps everything nice and dry. And uh, down there is where I go fishing. So I'm here. And that's how high up my camp is. The water's there. Right, so these are my cleats. They wrap around my shoes. Go around your shoes. Right, and then they've got spikes on the bottom of them. And then, you don't slip on the rocks. Safety first. Right, oh, so what I've done here is I've cut the bottle's top off, put it back inside the bottle and then punched some holes and tied it on with braid. I've then put the burley in there, punched a bunch of holes in it with a pair of scissors and tied the rope to it. And that's now gonna hang in the water and slowly release the scent of fish. You're gonna get thrown in there, hopefully attract fish. Yeah, there's definitely something here. Right, so I changed to a very small hook because I'm getting very small bites. All right, let's give that a go. Just a little sinker running to the hook just to get it down a little bit. All right, first cast. But sometimes it's Trevally riding close. Let's find out. Yeah, Trevally. Yeah, so they're right here. Let's drop that out there let it drift back in not deep enough to hit the bottom hopefully something smashes it there's one no i've got something that isn't fighting and i was down on the bottom and i'm hoping it's not an eel oh interesting jesus look at the color on him look at that little guy that is called a scorpion fish and also known as the poor man's lobster. Apparently if you get stung by one of these, the pain is immense for over 24 hours. They're relative of the stonefish. There he is, I'm not touching him. Off you go mate. Pass number three with the small baits. Let's see what happens, huh? They're right in here. Has bites. Oh, small bites. Yeah, I'm off. Whoa, oh, good fish. Oh, how did he get off? Really good fish. Hectic. Alright, so they are here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm on. Let's find out what it is. It's not huge, but they bite well, whatever they are. Little tail beaks. Feels like a javali. And it is. Yes. Look at that. Javali. I knew they were here. So I've got some in the other video. So I put him in a rock pool so he doesn't get injured or injure himself. There you go, pal. Jesus, just as he got off. Look at him, swimming around in there. Alright, let's see if we can't do it again. Keep tension on the line. Let's see if there's any others here. Usually there is. So it's big ocean, small bait. There, there, there they are. Yeah, I'm on. Oh, they go hard. Oh man. Oh, far out. Come on, eh? Man, these things go hard. 
a little fish. We want to use this wave, little tail beats definitely to rally. Oh, number two. Jesus. I'm just going to keep putting him in this rock pool. He's a bit bigger than the other one. All right, that's two Trevally. I might change to the two to four kilo because this would be really fun on a really light setup. I hope I'm getting this. Yeah, they're on it already. Out the back there of all of the whitewash and then I'm keeping the tension just so that it doesn't hit the bottom and it drifts in towards where they are which is all about here in front of me and then as soon as they hit it try to set the hook they hit real fast yeah oh pulled it pulled hooks Close. And again. Yeah. Yeah, good fish. They got very, very, very frail mouths. So you gotta be really gentle with them. They got frail mouths. I think could just spin up to any minute. Yes. Number three. It's unbelievable. So they're in here, and I got to catch them. Which is a bit silly, but whoa, they are so fast. Jesus. Whoa. You see that? They're gonna get themselves stuck there if I just keep spooking them. This is a bit of a silly move. I probably shouldn't have put them in there. Alright, so I just bashed those fish. Shouldn't have put them in that rock pool because that was rather hard to catch them. And now I'm gonna try and get a few more. And um, that'll be that. Ah, pulled it out of his mouth. Ah, here's another cast. See if there's any more Trevally in here. Yeah. Yeah. He's a bit smaller. size I think yeah but I'll measure him just to be sure so they got to be 30 centimeters legally in New South Wales 26 if you chill you can go back bro relax this is the only issue if I let this one go I'm not gonna catch any more so I got to hold him for a little bit Obviously in a smaller rock pool than I put those other ones. Right, I'm going to let this one go. Shit. Oh, I just missed it. Good. Alright. There's a good chance they'll stop biting now. So I'm just putting on these tiny little bits of pilchard. They have very little mouths. Throw some of that back in there. Alright, let's give it a go. Pretty much instantaneous as soon as it hits the water. Yeah. Ah, pop hooks. That's alright. Alright, just put a tail on. See if something will. Yeah. Oh, far out, man. They're just popping hooks. Taking bait like crazy. Straighten it on. One little bit of pilly at a time. Hopefully some salmon or something. Hopefully we spot something else swimming through. 
be cool to have a bit of a mixed bag. Here we go. Watch how fast they hit. Ready? That's it. Oh. Wow, did they take the bait that quick? Let's size that way. Is that the old folklore is true? You put one little silver trevally back and they all disappear. Look at this. Crazy. Makes it feel kind of small, huh? All packed up uh, and it's time to go. Picked up a bunch of rubbish that people had left here and now I'm hiking out. It's about a 1.5 two hour hike, something like that. Because um, I got other things to do this afternoon. Home safe and sound.